here that says that. All right, well, listen, welcome everyone to tonight's magic show. And some of you were with me before, so you're getting tired of me saying it, but some of you haven't. So we don't do webinars at Full Circle, we do magic shows. Because webinars are boring, magic shows are fun and exciting, and you never quite know what's gonna pop out of the sleeve. So, uh, you know, don't hold me to it, but we're gonna have some fun tonight. So we are talking about uh, mar solving the marketing forever. And uh, let's be clear, there is some method to the madness of why I put the title, Stop Leaving the Toilet Seat Up. Uh, which we, you know, we'll get to in a brief moment. But um, for those of you that are new to Full Circle, right? Full Circle is designed to help you grow as a person in a business so that you can make more money while taking an extra day off each week. And uh, we have some very accomplished Full Circle lights here tonight that uh, would be a testament to that. Audience. So uh, welcome, Jonathan and uh, and others. Uh, it's nice to have you guys here. So. We accomplished that through a four pillared model that I designed 26, I can actually say 26 years now, you guys, because I've uh, we, we turned the calendar year. So 26 years ago, when I started consulting full time, I designed a model because uh, for those who don't know the story, I, I kind of backed into coach consulting work. It wasn't a divination process. I didn't have a burning bush or, you know, uh, some sort of a uh, inspiration. Uh, I literally just did what I did uh, well enough that other people thought that it was pretty cool that I took 10 to 12 weeks of holidays, made a really nice take-home six-figure salary, and uh, worked about 25 hours a week. And so people started just asking me, how do you do that? And thus the consulting work was born. So I, I really thought through how I actually had manifested that in my life. And it was the four legs of the table that is the full circle process, right? Which is vision, which you can't... Uh, hit a target you can't see, right? So if you don't have clarity of vision with where you want to go, it's improbable, if not impossible, you're ever going to get there. And then we talk about the focus blocks that may be in the way of that vision expressing itself, limiting beliefs, hurts, fears, guilt, insecurities, in undeveloped skill sets, undeveloped communication pathways. There's a lot of different pieces there. Systems save you significant, is the word I'm going to use, time, energy, and money, which is the acronym that we love the most uh, for systems. And so systematizing your business will allow you the freedom of mental clarity as well as figurative time to do other things, which is why if they choose, the majority of our clients take more time off and it's usually at least an extra day uh, a week. Uh, and of course, team together, everyone achieves more allows you to leverage and scale your business uh, because entrepreneurs by their nature, and I know myself, but I know any of you, uh, by our nature, we're, you know, we're ambitious, but we're also self-realized, self-actualized, self-reliant. And that will take us so far in life, gang. And then that's exactly the thing you'll hit your head on and why you won't grow anymore, because you're being too self-reliant. You're trying to do it all yourself. Learning how to lead, learning how to delegate, learning how to trust others, learning how to create accountability systems, learning how to inspire others to be part of the mission. And that's, a, that's an art. And uh, it's something that we're quite good at here at Full Circle. So let's get, uh, this is the model that we work with right here is the, the vision, the focus, the systems and the team. And it all spins around the essence of who you are. Uh, we look at it over the course of three different timelines, always starting with the short term, first year to three years, uh, moving on to midterm three to seven and then long-term 15 to 20. So that is the story. So what's the story about like the toilet seat up, right? Well, how many have ever been to a mixed party? Right? I mean, males and females, pretty common, correct? And what tends to happen at mixed parties is, you know, people have to go to the washroom to keep their consuming fluids. And so the toilet seat goes up, it goes down, goes up, it goes down, goes up, it goes down, right? And this is the uh, ebb and flow of the toilet seat. <laughs> How does this tie to marketing? Well, here's been our experience. The vast majority of healthcare professionals we work with uh, that have not solved marketing yet tend to have ebbs and flows in their new patient volume, right? Um, and I'm just out of curiosity, has anybody ever in their career, some of you have been here for in the profession for a short period of time, some for a long time, just go to the chat, you guys, I love to use the chat when we can, and just anybody ever have ebbs and flows in their marketing? Throw it in the chat, you guys, just a me, me, yep, no, well, somebody, maybe nobody has ever had ebbs and flows, and then I really need to tailor this talk a little bit. Uh, some of this is only every year. Blair's had them for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just a very common thing, right? And it's frustrating. Yeah, I find it very frustrating when I had ebbs and flows in new clients. There was nothing I love more, you guys, being able to look into the, uh, in the old days, the appointment book, and see new clients booked ahead two, three, four weeks 
we found that in my practice that the, the pinnacle was four weeks. We'd have a four week waiting list for new clients. Uh, and after that, they just, they, they just they never seemed to get to five or six or seven or eight. Uh, they would either think that they got better, right? Or they went to see somebody else or they went to emerge or I don't know, maybe they died. I don't know what the hell happened. But anyways, they didn't, they didn't show up in our office. So that's the, uh, the opposite of ebbs and flows. Something that is, if when you solve marketing, it's possible. I did a, a large, um, I, sorry, I did a program for a large national organization a couple of weeks ago, uh, working on purpose, mission, values, and resetting their compass for them. And uh, there's one of the gentlemen on there that was saying he's got a, he now has a two and a half month waiting list for new clients. And it's like, a boy, he's obviously got something solved on the marketing front, right? Because what happens when you have ebbs and flows of new patients is, you get volume fluxes, right? Because if you look at the formula for um, uh, volume, you guys, right? It's a really simple formula. There's only two components. It's your numbers of new clients multiplied by how often they come or what's commonly referred to in healthcare as your patient visit average, your PVA, right? So again, you can work on one of two sides in order to increase your volume because when you increase your volume, you increase your service, you increase your fulfillment level as a human being and as a practitioner and you also increase your revenue. Nice fringe benefit, right? Uh, just a show of hands. Anybody here okay with making more money? Any, anybody show of hands? Any, anybody make okay with making more money? Yeah, oh, okay, good. I'm definitely talking to the right people. So new patient fluxes, volume fluxes. When volumes flux, what happens? By the way, I love that men come up with this one. Isn't that cool? What a great slide, right? What a great graphic. Revenue chaos, right? And then what is the ripple effect? to revenue chaos well there's besides the emotional instability that is often associated with that the feelings of lack the feelings of i'm not good enough right anybody ever had you don't even have to show your face just put your hand in the camera if you've ever had a feeling of maybe i'm not good enough to really make this work anybody ever had that feeling anybody ever yeah a couple of people have had that right okay so when you got that revenue chaos the the fear that is the back of most people's brains that i've ever coached in 26 years is this Financial instability, right? Blair's like in his head. He goes, yep, that sucks, right? Because watch what happens when you got financial instability. If you're a family-oriented person and you're like trying to think ahead about, you know, can we send the kids to this summer camp or that summer camp? Do, can we fix the brakes on the car? Do I need to reshingle the roof? Why, by the way, as a homeowner, why is it that there's always friggin' something going on in a house that doesn't require money? The refrigerator goes, right? Or whatever, right? So as you're making those day-to-day -day life decisions that are values-based, I hope, and are important to you, it's like, it's a lot easier to make those decisions when you're feeling flush in your bank account, correct? Right? Yes? Yeah, for sure. So what is the solution, you guys? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. You guys are on the right call, just so you know. We want to have predictable new patient flow, don't we? Right? And so the way to get predictable new patient flow is to work through the things that we're going to talk about tonight, okay? We've got predictable new patient flow. Miraculously, what do you have? You have steady volume. Good answer, Blair. Good one. Well done. Well said, sir. I could see your lips moving from the background. And when you have steady volume, Joe, what do you have? You have financial stability. You said it. I could see your lips moving. Ventriloquist over here, right? And financial stability leads to this. Clear sailing, right? I mean, who needs the emotional turmoil in their life of just being stressed out? Uh, you know, can I make this payment? Can I invest in this? Can I do this? Can I buy this new thing for the office? Can I bring on a new team member? Can I buy my partner that thing that they've always wanted, a just because gift? You know, because um, of course the uh, the antithesis of clear sailing is choppy seas, and choppy seas are uh, amongst other things not only are they financially unstable, but they're also emotionally leads to emotional, at least for me, led to emotional instability, right? So uh, I don't know about you, but um, that's, uh, that's a not for me, right? So let's talk about what is for us. Well, and I'm going to use the example here of Dr. AJ. Dr. AJ was a client of ours a few years ago. We worked with him for several years. And when we started working with AJ, he had new patient challenges, right? He had a void. He was seeing about 15 new clients a month, which for some people is like, woohoo, but that's not going to sustain, a, it, it might sustain a small practice. It is not going to build a practice. I absolutely promise you that, right? And so as a result of that, he, like, and he was hungry. He wanted to serve more people. That's why he hired our, our team, right? But he needed a plan. 
because he didn't really understand marketing. He had not solved marketing, right? And what we also realized is that he needed more certainty about who he was as a, as a human being and as a practitioner and what, uh, what, you know, in his ability to deliver the goods, right? So what we did was we implemented the following stuff, right? We implemented a healthcare class. And he was able to start educating his practice members uh, more about the, the benefits of you know, the service that he offered, right? We uh, transcribed and formulated a social media uh, campaign for him that was multi-pronged, which we'll talk about. Uh, we, he started actually shooting evergreen videos and I was actually communicating with AJ this week just to double check on some of my facts and figures because I like to be authentic and honest with people, right? And uh, we talked about the evergreen videos and he goes, you know what coach? That was beyond a stroke of genius. He said, it really pulled me out of my shell. It, it allowed me slash forced me to, you know, to, to express myself in a more coherent way. And he says, because we evergreen those things, you know, here we are now many years later and he's still using the same videos and he's using them as education tools at different parts of his program, right? Because they're replicatable. So just out of curiosity in the chat, who here uses uh, video? Just anybody, anybody shooting videos on a somewhat consistent basis? Anybody? I throw it in the chat. Jonathan is. Anybody else using video on a regular basis? Or, or actually, so give me this, you guys. Give me a yes, no, or a not yet. Please, in the chat. I'd love to see just where the crowd is at here tonight. Yes, no, or not yet. Let's just see what we got here. Finger, Ruth, your fingers aren't moving. Come on. I need to see your fingers moving in the chat. Please. What do we got? Jonathan says, my, my team shoots videos every month or on something kind of related. That's cool. Blair, a not yet. I like it. See, that's the right way to language that. Um, anybody else? Where are we at with video, you guys? It's a great tool. And I can tell you, everybody, including my team, including me years ago when I started to shoot video, I haven't, I haven't personally met anybody yet who likes how things go on video. I can't stand the sound of their own voice. They go, do I really look like that? How does the camera really add 10 pounds? I mean, you know, all of that stuff, right? So just, you know what? Get over yourself. Start shooting some videos. Um, also, we worked with AJ on enhancing his why because I was really tied to a certainty. And when we got that extra bit of clarity, you guys, good things started to happen. AJ, within a really short period of time, went to a steady flow of new clients in the 25 to 30 new patient per month range. And as a result of that, man, he had a massive increase in volume and revenue and fulfillment and joy. And I mean, all of the stuff that uh, I think is good stuff and stuff that I would love to see. So. Let's move on, you guys. Let's talk about how this thing actually works. So these are the five keys uh, um, to marketing, solving marketing forever, okay? Now, let's be clear. We don't have 26 hours on this program tonight just, you know, to give you all of the hows. What I want to do tonight is hit you with the five biggest keys so that you can be really clear about action steps to take. And when we get into the worksheets, you're going to get a chance to know what some really concrete action steps are before we leave this call tonight, okay? And for those that are uh, watching this on recording either later or something, uh, the, the time of this recording, it's uh, winter Olympic time, right? So you can guess when this happens, it only happens every four years and the men's half pipes on later. So just saying, if we get done in the official period of time, this cowboy gets to go and watch uh, the men's uh, snowboard half pipe. So, all right, let's talk about uh, the details here, you guys. Marketing mindset, everything. And I wanna go on record. I want this recorded. It is being recorded. I want this on record. Everything about your life and your business starts with mindset, right? So what's the mindset that, that is, that is uh, absolutely crucial for solving marketing, you guys? It's understanding that you're an amazingly gifted child of God, that you have tremendous skills, you have tremendous capabilities, you have tremendous service and products to offer the world, and that your seven point whatever billion there are as of this recording on the planet, brothers and sisters, need to know that you are open for business, that you are willing to share your gifts with the world, right? If you don't get that mindset, you guys, sharing is caring. I mean, let's go back to, I got five girls. Most of you know that. Uh, you know, let's go back to the Care Bears, right? <laughs> well, I used to love the Care Bears, right? And I watched that with the kids because they have these big old red hearts in the middle and they just beam love out through their hearts, right? I love that. Sharing is caring. And if you're you know, like trying to hide your light, your gifts, your, your amazingness underneath a friggin' bushel basket, and you're not willing to share your gifts with the world, you are never gonna solve marketing. And as a byproduct, you will always have 
new patient problems, which will lead to volume problems, which will lead to revenue problems, which will lead to emotional instability, and you will not have the fulfillment, joy that you would want to get out of practice, as well as the friggin' revenue. So, the, of course, if you're a client of Full Circle, we've got an entire module on this about the mindset of marketing, right? But just, just get this piece. Sharing is caring. You have a gift. Everybody has a gift. God doesn't make any junk, right? Some people are accountants. God bless them. Dry. My, my accountant's as dry as Melba Toast. I'm not the kind of guy I want to go have a beer with. But man, I'm glad he's my accountant. Because he, I, I swear the creative intelligence loved him into existence to do what he does. And so because I do what I do, I get to receive his services to me because that's what he does. I got plumbers. I've got a guy who's my car guy. I've got like, I've got people in my life that are very clear about what lane they're in and they're willing to stand out and let people know that that's what they do. That doesn't make them better or worse than anybody else. You guys do not moralize this, but there's a lot of people, particularly when I'll go back to AJ on this, when he wasn't as certain as he is today about his ability to deliver the goods, he was hesitant to share his light with the world. He was hesitant to share his message with the world. Do you guys, do you guys get that, right? So, when, so again, that's why, at least at Full Circle, why we work on the personal side and the certainty piece, because without that, it, it becomes this hollow chant in the marketing piece commonly, almost always, will not fulfill itself the way that it could, okay? So it all starts with mindset. If you feel like you've got a couple of hangups and I don't want to tell people what I do and I, I, I feel nervous and I'm tentative and I, I, I you know, I mean, I, there's other people that are better at this than I am and blah, 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 friggin' blah. You got to solve that, gang. You got to solve that. And you got to solve that before you do any of the other steps that I'm going to offer tonight, okay? All right. Also with marketing, and I don't care whether you've been in practice for five months, five minutes, or 50 years. All good marketers that really want to really get their message out there have a blend of internal and external marketing, okay? If you're relatively newer in practice, then you're probably going to need to do a lot more external marketing. It might be a 99% uh, to 1% ratio of external to internal, okay? As you mature in your practice and you get you work at uh, serving at a high level and you work at uh, helping people understand the value of what you do and they tell their friends and they stay and they pay and they refer, well, then, you know, that, that level might go from 99.1 to 80.20 to 50.50 to, you know, some other variation thereof, okay? And my daughter, who's a Cairo, very proud of her, proud of all my girls, but, you know, she's happened to follow a little closer in daddy's footsteps. Um, she is working in the doc's office that came through my practice. He was a kid in my practice years ago and uh, when dinosaurs roamed the earth and he got inspired to become a chiropractor through, you know, my practice, which I always think is one of the greatest compliments anybody could ever give me, chiropractically speaking, right? And, and again, he's been in practice, I think almost 20 years now. So that was a while ago. But as a result of that, he tried to recruit my daughter in, in third year, actually. He goes, this, this kid's a gem. I need, to, I need to scoop her up. So anyways, now she's working there and things are going well. But here's the piece I wanted to tell you. I was really clear that in Dr. Rob's practice, he's got such a mature practice now, he's actually drifted away from doing external marketing. Please, you guys, if you want to solve marketing forever, do not ever, ever stop external marketing. Maybe the percentage is a little less than it once was, right? And again, the, the hallmark, you guys, particularly these are their clients of ours, on your bliss sheets, whatever your intention is for the numbers of new clients you want to serve, which translates to the volume, which translates to the revenue, which translates to the other pieces of the puzzle, it, the, you are targeting the numbers of people per month that you said on your bliss sheet, okay? If you're not hitting that, you need to up your game. And I would encourage you to look both internally and externally in terms of uh, ways to, um, you know, do well at what you do, okay? The other thing you must do, you guys, is got to be a multi-pronged approach. The number of times we've come, come into a client's life that has, you know, got all their eggs in one proverbial basket, and then the basket crumbles, you know, the eggs break or something silly happens, uh, and then all of a sudden the new clients dry up, good, not good. Make sure it's multi-pronged. So the first prong is that internal external, but even within internal, you guys, right? Like for example, in my practice for years, we had a very event focused practice. What that means is probably every month to six weeks, we had some sort of an event, right? So, so often in January, we'd have like um, a beach week, 
where I'd bring in some beach sand and we'd dress up in like Hawaiian outfits and Hawaiian shorts and stuff in the middle of January in cold Canada. And we'd have like beach days and stuff, right? Fun, goofy, novel, you know, allowed me to not take myself so damn seriously. We would have Valentine's Day stuff, right? Where you could refer in your Valentine's for, and we'd have a draw or we'd have some sort of a prize pack or something, right? And then there was St. Patty's Day. And then there was uh, Easter, and then there was Mother's Day, and then there was Father's Day, and then we did summer barbecues and boat cruises, and we did Thanksgiving Day food drives. And we, like, you mean, it was just a series of experiences. And by the way, our summer mini putt tournament, you guys, was epic, was legendary. Sometimes we'd have over 100 people there, all kinds of families. We had a trophy. We had families that used to like, they'd, they'd, they'd get like t-shirts made with their names on the back to come to the, to the family mini putt tournament and stuff, right? because we wanted to create a community. We wanted to create a culture of inclusiveness, okay? And so, I mean, that was our, that was our cup of tea. It might not be yours, but I offer it for possibility because a lot of people don't think about events. And I can tell you one thing too, you guys, coaching tip. If you're finding that you're socializing a lot when you're with people, when you're you know, on the tables with them or you're you know, in the rooms with them or whatever, if you're socializing instead of educating, let me say this again. If you're socializing instead of ed educating, you're using your practice, you're using your connection with the people more so as a social outlet than you are being the doctor. Stay in your friggin' lane. You're the doctor that came to see you for your expertise. Check them, diagnose them, adjust them, educate them, be, be polite, be kind. But if you're not, if you feel like you need to socialize, you need to get your socialization needs met somewhere else. I remember saying this in Vegas when I was speaking one time. And one guy, <laughs> won't mention his name, very well-known chiropractor, he goes, I still even have a problem with that. And I said, well, then buy a dog, right? You need, <laughs> you need something to love. So love on a dog. And all of a sudden, mysteriously, magically, he, he uh, emailed me about two months later. He goes, you know what, Prax is up. Thanks for the tip, I bought a dog, right? So one of the reasons we did events is because it was a way for us to get our social needs met, where we could communicate and connect with people without having to do it in the rooms. Does, does, that, make, does that make sense to anybody? Show of hands, anybody? Does that resonate? Yeah, for sure. So make sure that it's multi-pronged. And by the way, to that end, you guys, we have at Full Circle, we have a 102 marketing idea PDF. So you can't ever tell me you don't have, you don't have enough ideas. You just reach out, right? If somebody wants that, just direct message me or something out to me. I'll make sure that gets to you, okay? The fourth of the five keys, you guys, is consistent and loud. And uh, consistent is one of the things that I see get screwed up a lot, you guys. People do not stay focused long enough to be consistent. Again, classic entrepreneur's mindset, right? Self-realized, self-actualized, self-reliant, all the things we talked about earlier, which gets you to a certain place and then you hit your head on it, right? So you got to flush in new clients and things are going well. And it's like all of a sudden entropy sneaks in and you start to drift off a little bit, right? And then what happens to the new patient volume? You're right, Joe, it goes down. Right. And then all of a sudden, oh, I need to go do some marketing. That's inconsistent marketing. If you've got this going on after you've been in practice for a bit and you've worked at it, it's because you're not being consistent enough. And probably because you're using your own ambition, your own drive, your own charisma, your own charm, and your own self reliance to do the marketing instead of developing systems and rhythms to do that. These magic shows that we put on, you guys, we, there's a system behind this. Absolutely amazing production. I don't think Fox is going to ask me for the rights, but you know, just saying, you know, maybe. We have a system that does it. So the next magic is already done, right? All of the marketing stuff is done. All of the slides are done. All of the nurture sequence is done. Like all the stuff is done because there's a sequence. So I don't even have to think about it. I mean, trust me, I thought about this today, but I mean, technically, I could, you know, groundhog day, put my head up, look up and go, oh, it's 7 30 on Thursday. I have a magic show to do. Everything is ready to go. It's consistent, it happens all the time, right? So develop rhythms and habits to that so that it becomes part of it. Because now you're working on your business, not just in it all the dog on time, okay? And don't be afraid to be loud. Richard Branson, I've never met, he's on my bucket list. I will meet him someday in person, but I've met him through his books, his writings and his videos and stuff. You know what? He, he hit me between the eyes many years ago with something relative to the loud piece. He goes, you know the worst flavor to be in marketing? Ice cream flavor? Vanilla. Nobody wants to eat vanilla ice cream. 
If you're in marketing, you want to be Rocky Road Tiger Tail Orange with a little twist of like mint or something, right? You want to be authentic. You want to be unique. You want to be who you are and not be afraid of the naysayers, right? I, 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 I was doing a training with my coach not, not too long ago, and she goes, I think you're still afraid of the naysayers. She goes, you got a naysayer and somebody that just wants to, like, doesn't see the world the way you do, you've got options. You could waste a boat ton of time and try and educate them and wrestle with them and, uh, and whatever. She goes, or you could just hit block delete on your Facebook group. <laughs> so I don't think that was any of you. I don't, th I don't think it was you guys. Um, I've been, uh, you know, uh, ferreting out some uh, people that just don't see the world the way I do, right? Because they just don't see the world the way I do. It doesn't make me right and I'm wrong or vice versa, but it just means they're not, they're not part of our community. They're not interested in learning and growing and developing. So it's like, I could waste a boat ton of time on them or I could just say that really cool four letter word, right? Get your head out of the gutter. Next, next, where's the next person I wanna help, right? Remember Joe Felicia, when he used to teach with Guy Rickman was, so was great at that, right? He would do this great little skit and stuff, right? Where he'd like, he'd, he'd go, he'd pretend he's in a, in a hotel and the hotel's on fire. And so he's running to wake people up because it's the middle of the night and he doesn't want them to burn to death. So he'd go and he'd, go and he'd knock on the door and he'd go, the, the hotel's on fire, the hotel's on fire. Please come on out. You've got to get out. You've got to get out. But like people just wouldn't pay attention. He goes, so what do you do? Do you stand there and knock on that door for like, you know, an hour and let everybody else die? Or you stop knocking the door and go to the next door and knock on the next door. Well, I hope you're saying let's knock on the next door, right? Because not everybody sees the world the way you do. Big surprise, right? So get used to the idea, you guys, being consistent, being loud, and just think, actually, you know what? I'd love to see this. I would love to see this. I would love to see what flavor of uh, ice cream you want to be. I want to see what the most outrageous flavor of vanilla, of non-vanilla ice cream you want to be. Let's see what you can do. Let's see who can get creative. Joe, get creative. What do you got? What's the, what ice cream flavor? Blair, what ice cream flavor? This is a metaphor for your marketing, okay? I want to see this in the chat. Let's see what you got. Jerry, what do you got? Let's see what you guys got. What? Let's get creative here. I already have Rocky Road Tiger Tail Mint, so you can't do that one, okay? So, sorry. Let's just see. What do we got in the chat here, you guys? What have we got? Um, we got slow fingers is what we got. I don't know how to leave anything here. I don't know how to leave Here we this. go. Here we go. Crystal gold peanut hot fudge on the broke. <laughs> okay, Jonathan, that's that's pretty high answer. I gotta tell you, that's that's pretty cool. Uh who else? <laughs> Who's got a flavor? I think somebody's not muted too, gang. So if you're not muted, would you kindly mute your line just to make sure? Uh Joe is Oreo and Huckleberry, a fave with a sprinkle of what the heck's PNW, Joe? Come off mute for a sec. Pacific Northwest. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, Oregon Huckleberry. All right, anybody else? Anybody else got a flavor? Come on, you guys, play nice. Mint chocolate chip with some cookie dough pieces. Okay, you know what? That's got that's that's unique. I uh, you'll be eating that one alone, Blair. Sorry, buddy. I'm not I'm not I'm not down with that one, right? All right, what's the fifth point here, you guys? Team effort. Now, if your absolute ideal is to just be a lone wolf and work on your own, and that's your like that's your dream, and like and then ignore this slide, okay? But if it's not, and you want to leverage and scale and actually do the most you can with what you got to work with, then make it a team effort. Delegate, enroll the team to help out and and do things that are part of the marketing plan. You know, I'm a big fan of planning. You know, I'm a big fan of living intentionally. It's kind of like a synonym for planning, right? So whenever you leave the planet, you leave with no regrets or resents. So we're big fans of AGMs, annual planning meetings, right? Usually a day or two. Ours used to be three, but we've cut it back to two. Um, and then out of that, you can actually create a, a, at the very least, a roughed out template of your marketing plan for the year. And then you can really tighten up at least the Q1, presuming that you're following a calendar quarter. And you can really tighten up at least the, the, the Q1, but having a, a sketched out plan for the entire year is absolutely genius. And uh, if you're a full circle client, of course, we have our marketing calendar uh, that's a behemoth of a document. But, but the cool thing about it is it's one, it's one document, right? But we have multiple tabs on it. So then they repeat for Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. 
internally now, we're actually doubling down on our marketing uh, planners and we've gone to using Trello boards. And one of the things we like about Trello boards, I'm such a hopeless visual processor, visual learner, that I'm using the Trello boards. I like Trello boards. We use them on our implementation side and planning side, but we're now using it for marketing as well because you assign things to people in there with deadlines and stuff, right? You can move them around really easily into different lists and stuff, right? Um, it's, it's really working out well. So a little tidbit, uh, if you want to get a little bit up to date with marketing, you might choose to get into the, um, you know, using Trello as, a, as, a, as another tool for planning and following through, right? And by the way, that's a big piece, you guys, right? I hear this all the time. People that have team members that don't follow through. They don't follow through on what they committed to do. I, it hasn't been my you guys and I, I can't really speak to exactly why except the most common thing I've heard from from team members is because the doc isn't sharing the heart and soul of their vision enough the doc isn't sharing the heart and soul of their vision enough and so what happens is it's just it's just another friggin thing to do right but when you can see the big picture and you can get connected to that and get excited about that as a team member why wouldn't you want to you know pull the pull on the traces to use a a sled dog analogy as much as possible okay all right so listen what's uh, let's do real quick in the chat one more time no long things here what's been most uh, helpful so far you guys or what's been the best reminder or affirmation so far i want to see where i'm going to go with the second half of this conversation based upon what you put in the chat what's been your biggest insight affirmation or most helpful so far what have you got because i can tweak the tail end of this you guys based upon what you guys tell me here so let me Oh, by throwing some thoughts in the chat, please. Very helpful for my side of this. Multi-prong, consistent allowed. Very cool, Jonathan. Yeah. External, internal for me as a new Cairo. Yeah, absolutely, Blair. Yeah, that's very cool. Anybody else? What else has been helpful so far? The multi-prong as well, Joe? Okay, cool. All right. Well, that's good stuff. Well, listen, let's uh, let's go. Well, I already asked that question, you guys, right? Let's go in and let's look at the uh, at the worksheet. And I'm going to just stop share for a minute because I got some things I definitely want to uh, go over with you guys uh, on this front. But it would be helpful if the uh, stop share button would actually work. There we go. All right, now let's go in and pull up this other uh, worksheet. By the way, just quick quick blink of hands. Did you guys get the worksheets? Did they get downloaded to you or sent to you? Is that a yes? Thumbs? Hands? Yes? Okay, well, they're available if you didn't get a chance to see it yet, right? So let me just go back and share the screen, you guys. And uh, I wanna just fill in a couple of blanks for you here. And I also want to enroll you in uh, how this thing should go, okay? So again, we talked about mindset being the very, very first piece here, right? And so what I want you to do right now with where you are today, with your perception of solving marketing forever, okay? And even based upon the, the steps I've talked about so far, just how do you feel like you are in the world of mindset? Just put a number in there, you guys, from one to 10, okay? 10 is I'm like, I'm 100% solid on my mindset about marketing. Sharing is caring. I'm willing to take responsibility for my gifts and just shout to the world in a multi-pronged internal, external way. So just throw a number in there, you guys, from one to 10 in that middle uh, column, okay? If you'd like some help with mindset, you guys, besides obviously if you're a client of ours talking to the coaching team, I could not recommend this book enough. Uh, it's a guy, a gentleman named Robert Cialdini, okay? And it's called Persuasion, The Psychology of Influence. Wow, that is really interesting spelling. Psychology, psychology of influence. Okay, uh, and he is a uh, PhD in social psychology, actually, from the University of Arizona at Tempe. And uh, he's literally the guy that almost all of the master marketers in the world reference, okay? I've read this book twice. He's got a follow-up book to it. Uh, I'm probably due to read it again because it's just so full of beautiful stuff, you guys. So if you want, probably the, the best shortcut I've ever seen to increasing your mindset around marketing and why you should market as well as some hows, not specific, say this on an Instagram post or any of that nonsense, okay? But just big picture umbrella stuff, he's definitely the person to do. All right, now, relative to the outside inside concept, how well are you balancing your outside inside marketing? Okay, if it's perfectly balanced because you're seeing the exact number of new clients every month you'd love to, put yourself a 10 in the middle there, okay? 
Obviously, anything right down to one where, quite frankly, I suck at this, I need a lot of help, Tom, okay? And again, uh, if you're looking for ideas, we have 102, whoop, let's get the spelling right here, marketing ideas PDF. And if you'd like that, you guys just reach out to me, direct message me on Facebook or in the group, in the, um, in the Facebook group or Dr. Tom at fullcirclecoachingconsulting.com, whatever, I'm happy to get that to you, okay? All right, multi-pronged. Again, score this, you guys. Some of you said that that was probably a big insight for you to realize I need to be maybe more, more multi-pronged. So give yourself a score if you're like, like that amazing red deer that I showed the picture of with like a bazillion points on his rack, then you know, give yourself a 10. If not, anything right down to a one. And these are five of my favorites, you guys, that I've got over in the column here, okay? Again, you must be willing to share, speak, teach, right? That's just like an umbrella piece. Share, speak, teach in some way, shape, or form. Now, what's cool versus when I entered practice years ago is that there are so many other ways to share and teach now, right? In the old days, it was pretty much getting your butt in front of people, which is still a great way to do that, you guys, but there's so many more ways to do that, right? You could do it through virtual platforms like, like Zoom conferences like we're doing right now. You could do it through uh, uh, starting a YouTube channel. You could do it through doing reels on Instagram. You could do it. I mean, there's just so many ways to get your message out there. But if your mindset isn't right about your ability to share because you're an amazing human being who's got a gift to share, you're always going to find some reason not to do this. Correct? Right? So you got to get your head on straight about this first game, right? Social media is an amazing tool, as we've already said. Google is something that a lot of our clients are using and, and doing very, very well with, right? Doing uh, Google ads, Google search, SEO stuff, right? Uh, I already talked about video. Um, there's an increasing number of healthcare providers that are starting their own YouTube channels. And uh, I'll give you a hint, you guys. You build the YouTube channel up enough, you got a nice little uh, stash of residual income coming in there because once you get to 1,000 subscribers, and consistently um, 4,000 hours of view time over the last uh, year, YouTube will start putting advertising and you start to get paychecks. So I'm not suggesting that's maybe the reason to start doing video and maybe even using YouTube as an example, but it's a, a nice fringe benefit. And of course, just the old faithful, you guys, is table talk. Because in this day and age, you know, you've got to be definitely sensitive to how you're communicating and what you're communicating. But you know what? There's this interesting thing called plausible deniability. Plausible deniability. You're one-on-one -on -one with somebody in a room, right? You want to be authentic. You want to be concise. Obviously, you're going to be speaking your truth. But you can, you can educate people at a really like intimate level when they're at that, in, that, in, that, in that space or on the table if you, don't, if you have open concept uh, and are able to communicate things in a great way. Um, and again, the plausible deniability is, well, I never said that. I'm really sorry. I didn't say that. or I didn't intend that. Right. So there's, I know there's people that are sensitive in this day and age to even open their mouth because they're afraid they're going to say something wrong. You know what, you guys, um, I would rather have you saying some things and making an impact. And that one naysayer that's out there that says, you said this and you, uh, it's like, well, you know what, I, I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. It's not what I meant to say. I, that's not what I meant. And so you have a way to, uh, you know, for those people that are totally freaked out about liability and all that nonsense, there is definitely plausible deniability there, okay? All right, consistent and loud. Scale of one to 10, how consistent and how loud are you? How good are you at, what was it, Jonathan? Golden prey nugget something. <laughs> so give yourself a score from one to 10, okay? One is, quite frankly, this is weak for you. And 10 is I'm crushing it. I'm knocking it out of the park, okay? And again, in terms of you know consistent and loud, you definitely want to start with a plan, you guys. And then, as we've just said, you 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 the uh, you want to not be vanilla, right? Anything other than vanilla. All right. The last one is team. How good are you at enrolling your team at helping out? Okay. And there's at least three levels to this, you guys, in terms of really getting the team going. It's a it's a must, an absolute must to have team meetings, and I would advocate for weekly. OK, because it's a great way to communicate information back and forth. Right. You must also then be willing to delegate. And this is something that a lot of leaders need a lot of help with in the entrepreneurial space. Man, I'll tell you something, a lot of help with learning how to delegate. And the last piece then is a follow up accountability. Right. Because, you know, if, if you're not willing to hold someone accountable to the agreements they made. You shouldn't have made the agreement in the first place. 
Let me say that again. If you're not willing to hold someone accountable for the agreements you made, you should not have made the agreement in the first place. Okay. So again, this is a, a something that is a, you know, a lot of people need some help with. Okay. So again, give your score. And then what you're going to do, you guys, oh, wow, it actually kind of de de departed and went down here. Okay. You're going to want to put your total in there out of 50. So just add up the five numbers you did. Obviously, if they're all tens, it would be a 50. If they're all ones, it would be a five. <laughs> And let's just go through what this means, you guys, with where you are today. And let's, let's be clear. The idea of doing any assessment or any questionnaire, at least in the world we live in full circle, is to get, help you get awareness. Because if you don't have awareness, there's a problem, you're kind of screwed. And it's long been held in self-development and coaching that 50% of the solution to problem, awareness that there's a problem. So if you didn't score 50, you guys, or at least plus 45, then there's probably something to learn. So this is the scoring legend that we come up with, right? If you get 25 or less, you're either super new to marketing or you've not really invested much time to really understand it yet. Guarantee you have ebbs and flows in new patient volume, which creates the volatility in the patient the visit volume, creates the revenue up and down. But there are solutions and I really encourage you to reach out and get some help, right? 25 to 35, you got some basic understanding of the need for marketing, but likely lack consistency of your marketing message. That's the consistency piece. This is where we find people that score in this range, okay? Getting clear on what your avatar is and creating a plan to bring consistency into your messaging will create stability, which is really what you're crazy, both in new patient flow, volume, and revenue, okay? 35 to 45, you've got some ownership. Congrats of both the why and the how of marketing, okay? There may still be some holes in the consistency of your marketing, but more likely it's the need to diversify, right? The multi-pronged thing. Okay, so just be aware of that. If you're in 45 plus, man, you got marketing pretty much figured out, right? Congrats. Keep doing what you're doing. And the usual upgrade I find for people scoring in this range is that they need to be even uh, more delegation, more team effort. Okay, so uh, hey, let's just see, where did you guys score? Let's throw it in the chat, you guys. Where did you guys score? What, uh, what was your number? This is a friendly group. What do we got here? We got a Jonathan, 49, Atta boy. Joe, 33, congrats. That's, that's cool. Room for growth. Uh, Jerry, three. Okay, that's, 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 that's some. Blair, 23, some room for growth there. Okay. Uh, Ruth, a 22. So we get a little room for growth there too. So again, you know what? Anybody that scored less than Jonathan's 49, um, you know what? There's uh, opportunity for growth and development there, right? Obviously, if you're a client of ours, it's something we'll be built, talk about in your game plans uh, in order to help you get to where it is that you want to go. Uh, Let's go and uh, go back over to the presentation and uh, sort of walk through just, you know, where we're going to go from here. So let me just do a little screen share here, gang. And uh, I just want to draw out a little model that I have here because this is, I find, again, I'm such a hopeless visual learner. Well, I wouldn't say hopeless, but I'm a visual learner. So uh, you know what, why is it that my iPad acts weird sometimes? And it only seems to do it whenever I want to share something with, with uh, people on a call. That's so odd. Just hang in there while I uh, try and deal with some very small technical difficulties. Bum, bum, bum. All right, here we go. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Okay. So let's be clear, you guys, we talked about mindset. And really when we're talking about mindset, what we're talking about, and I said this in different ways, you know, throughout this entire conversation tonight, or hopefully you were, you were listening between the lines here. Really your mindset is about your why and making sure that you're working on your certainty with who you are as a practitioner, your ability to deliver the goods is at least as important as why, right? So again, you're an amazing human being. You've got gifts to share with the world as does every other human being. So let's be sure that you that you know really clear and work on your why and your certainty uh when we're talking about uh you know looking at both doing marketing inside and outside of the practice what we're really talking about here you guys is we're talking about diversifying right you need to diversify in business in order to really get uh the full bang for your time and energy when we're talking about uh, multi-pronged we're really talking about your strategy right and these are much more commonly accepted sort of businessy words if you will okay we're talking about consistent and loud. We're really talking about persistence, 
which is a sign of every great marketer is persistent, 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 and keep, you know, to keep moving and keep doing. And of course, on the, on the, well, hello. And on the team effort side, what we're really talking about is the ability to delegate, which the subtext there, you guys, is leadership, right? This is really about uh, flexing your leadership muscles. And so again, just to try and put this into context, you guys, right? It always starts, if you just try and put this into a geometry, it always starts with the why. The why is the most important piece. And if you, you leave this with nothing else, but I'm, I'm going to work on my why, I'm going to work on my certainty, I'm going to work on my mindset. If that's the only piece you took away from tonight, your time will have been you know, very, very, very well spent. But if you really want to nail this thing, right, then you want to, as we already said, we want to diversify, right? You also uh, want to be sure that you've got really clear strategy and you want to be able to delegate and help to get the team to help you. And out of the, and then with all of that stuff, you want to be sure that you are being very, very persistent. Okay. So uh, if you guys want, you can grab a quick screenshot of that. I know some people have uh, asked me to kind of pause for a moment on, the, on these models to make sure they can grab a quick screenshot if you choose. Feel free. Because again, those of you us that are visual learners, that 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 picture right there is worth you know the entire process for me because it will stick in my brain, which is one of the reasons I'm sharing it with you guys. Okay. All right. Well, let's bring this rascal in for a landing. But before we do, uh, I'm going to share just a couple more pieces. Does anybody have a quick question? Because often we get to the end of these things, people are kind of burned out. It's late at night when we're recording. It's like. Uh, if you've got a quick question, just, you know, come off mute and uh, I'm very happy to take a question if you have one while I'm getting set up for this next little piece of the puzzle here. Anybody have any questions? Maybe not at this time. That's way cool. All right. So we already talked about the, um, the worksheet here, you guys. And Tom, the coach, says... Make sure you do at least these two things as a result of being present tonight, okay? Share your gifts, you guys. Share your gifts. You've got gifts. Every human on the planet. One of my great spiritual mentors says this. He says, God doesn't make any junk, right? Whatever numbers of people, seven point whatever billion people there are on the planet, everybody has gifts. You have gifts. The, it was one of my other spiritual mentors says, the creative intelligence loved you into existence for a reason. And part of that reason is to perform your profession, to do what it is you do, right? If you do not, if you're not willing to accept full responsibility for that, if you're not willing to take ownership that you are an amazingly talented, fabulous, brilliant, gorgeous, and gifted human being, and you're willing to share that, because you know, the epitome of not sharing is to be selfish. And I've called out some clients in the past when I tell them that they're being selfish. And I get the how dare you and what do you know and blah, 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 blah. But if you get, you get in, you want to look up the root of the word selfish, you guys, you want to look it up in the dictionary. You could definitely, you'll read different parts of it, but I tell you, it's definitely about not sharing your gifts. So get your mindset clear, get your why clear, get your certainty clear and share your gifts. Tell the world that you're here to help them. Not everybody wants what you're offering, gang, right? Not everybody wants what you're offering, but that just means you use that four letter word and you go next. And you talk to the next person. Use Joe Felicia's great example, right? Of knocking on the, the you know, the hotel room doors at night, right? The, the hotel's on fire, the hotel's on fire, please leave. They don't want to answer the door. They don't want to listen to you. That's okay. That's their right. But you have a moral, or if you allow me, a spiritual responsibility to go and knock on the damn door. <laughs> knock on some doors, gang. <sighs> Getting fired up, Ruthie. Getting fired up about this. All right. The other thing, you must never quit. Ever, 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 ever. Jonathan, you've been in practice quite a while too, right? I mean, there's not every, not every marketing thing you try is a home run, right? Right. And some of them, quite frankly, don't work that well. I'll tell you this, you guys, if you're not tracking your return on investment in terms of both time and money, if you're not, re if you're not tracking your ROI, your return on investment, both time and money, you're running blind, gang, on marketing. The most difficult marketing plan to make is your very first one. Because after that, it gets easier because you're going to track your marketing. You're going to track your marketing. And as a result of that, you're going to know whether things went well or they didn't. 
I often tell a story about a client of mine from Vancouver, Canada, who was a veteran practice for years, had lots of old client files. And I said, we need to start a reactivation campaign. So I enrolled him in creating a reactivation letter. He mailed it out. We started out just mailing it out to 50 people or 35 people you know, at a time, because if he had a rush on the clients, he was going to go overwhelmed, right? So we started out just, I think it was 35 at a time. And so I got on a call with him a few weeks later and I said, how'd it go? He goes, oh, it sucked. I said, really? Why did it suck? He goes, I only got two new clients out of it, two, two like reactivations out of it. I said, really? I said, let's do some math. I said, uh, what's your case average right now? He says, well, you, the coach you taught me how to do it. <laughs> so he says, it's 1800 bucks. So I said, what that means is every client who walks in your door on average, some come once and never come back. And some come and stay for 10 years, right? So what's the average of the average? Well, there's a simple calculation. His average was $1,800. That means every new client who walks his door on average left $1,800 in his office. I said, what did it cost you to do the mail out, Wayne? He goes, well, it cost me envelopes and letters. He said, send up 35, it's about a you know, buck 50 a piece. So I guess it cost me about 50 bucks. I said, you invested $50, how much of your time? He goes, ah, it took me like an hour to write the letter and maybe another half hour or whatever, my team to mail it and stuff like that. I said, wait a second. What you just told me is you invested an hour of your time, it cost you 50 bucks, and you made $3,600. What are you bitching about? <laughs> he wasn't tracking, so we didn't even know that it was an absolute home run, right? How motivated was he after that, you guys, to keep doing it? He was pretty motivated, right? Track your marketing, you guys. Track your marketing. There's an entire piece in Full Circle about how to do that. And never, ever, 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 ever quit right there's an old saying in marketing you guys just like there is in the world series in baseball it's the singles and doubles that win the world series not the home runs it's the singles and doubles that win the world series not the home runs the home runs look pretty right so you do some great big splashy thing and it, you know it sounds great and it looks great and that's it's, that's not the thing that's the bread and butter of your marketing it's the singles and the doubles okay all the singles and the doubles. I'll tell you a quick story about that, you guys. There was a thing uh, in Carpenter years ago. It was called Kids Day. Kids Day America, actually. The Warners put this together, and I bought into it. And I had to hire a part-timer for over two months to put the damn thing together. And we had, it was a home run. We had 463 kids through our practice on a Saturday. We had the mayor there doing a ribbon cutting. We had the police there and the fire people there. And we had a karate dojo doing a demonstration. We had a gymnastics team and it was bells and whistles. I brought up interns from the chiropractic school to, to scan the kids neurologically and stuff. We had fingerprinted them and we had all this. It was an amazing event, 463 kids through our, through our practice. We ended up with 28 new patients out of it. Not the best average to be quite honest, but anyways, it was you know a, a home run by all sense. Put 28 new patients in your practice tomorrow, gang. Okay? Can I have a positive outcome? Yeah. When we did the ROI on it, you guys, it looked like a home run because it was splash. We were in the newspaper, on the radio, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you looked at the ROI in terms of time and money, it sucked. It sucked. We did it once. We never did it again. It's the singles and doubles, you guys, that win the World Series. It's the singles and doubles that uh, are the things that are going to help you get where you want to go. All right. Well, let's wrap this up, you guys. Uh, and again, is. Every second Thursday on average, I'm here doing a magic show because we don't do webinars, Blair, they're boring, okay? Um, and so in two weeks, you guys, here is the greatest human resources secret I've ever learned. And we titled it, Give Them the Boot and Learn to Recruit, Never Hire. I'm having some fun with these titles, you guys. You got, you know, give me a little bit of credit for being just a little bit edgy, right? This is not a vanilla title, okay? It's not. It's, uh, it's maybe not... Uh, golden brown crusted walnut tiger tail orange but it's uh, you know it's headed in the right direction so uh, if you guys would like to uh, be a part of that and learn the greatest hr secrets that i have ever learned uh, i think that if i yeah look at that i even know how to do this in the chat is the link you guys so if you want to click on that you can go and register for that if you don't register you don't get access unless you're jonathan and knows how to find me anyways which is pretty cool uh, but then that's the greatest HR secret I've ever learned, you guys, is to recruit and never, ever, 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 ever hire, ever, never, never, never. Okay. Thanks for your time and your attention. It's an honor to have you in our presence tonight, whether you're watching this live or on recording. And uh, before we wrap this up and I get to go watch that tail end of that Olympic event, anybody have any quick questions for us? Just pop off mute. I'd be very happy to answer the questions if anybody has one. 
Ruth asked a question about Trello. With respect to Trello, what program do you use? Uh, so actually the program is called Trello, Ruth, right? The one we use. And it's just an organizational system like Asana or Slack or any of those kind of systems. Is that, did that answer the question, Ruth? Or is there a specific part? It costs us not a whole lot every month. I, I, I don't know what plan we have, but the, the software is actually called Trello. Okay, thanks. You know what, I'll Google it and see what I can find. If I have trouble, I'll reach out. You know where to find me, Ruthie, yep. Yeah. Hey, Blair, you're most welcome, right? Uh, I, uh, you're most welcome, man. Happy to, uh, to be of uh, service tonight. Anybody have any questions? All right, cool. That either means you guys are like marketing geniuses or I just performed some sort of a magic trick. Uh, either way, thanks so much for being here, you guys. And uh, thanks for letting me do what I do because doing what I do um, allows me to fulfill my purpose and my reason for being and part of the reason the creative intelligence loved me into existence. So again, everybody, wherever you are in the world, enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again, okay? Good night, everybody. Yeah, good, good night. night.